усилен, блин. Yes, here, here we are. So you get videotape A. Are your aqueducts falling apart? When was the last um, time your subterranean yeah. tunnel system passed a safety inspection? Well, good, it's a good point. It's a good point. I mean, when was it? When was it? I mean, it's been quite. It's been some time. Capable of a vast array of subterranean maintenance and construction. The fixer is the answer to all your underground maintenance needs. Pesky intruder, vagrants. No worries. The fixer is outfitted with the latest defense modules, making it the state of the art patrol sentry. The fixer is the choice for any self-respecting government or corporation of the 21st century. There's a, there's a genuine kind of uh, element of sort of dyst dystopian kind of future about that advert. It kind of, I remember thinking that it was a little bit. The new code is nine two five seven two, and it seems to be working fine. Excellent. We need to remember that code. Um, it, yeah, there's, there's sort of a bit of a, uh, what do you call it, a, um, dystopian or uh, Robocop-esque, uh, Robocop-esque or um, Starship Troopers feel to it, yeah. Neither do I love. Bad idea. Far too many fixes. Oh, there's another instant death thing coming up in a minute. Get okay, round here. Cause a problem. to hide before those fixers get here. Run, 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 run. Just need to hide here. Just need to come in. Let's start fixing shit. We are here. There'll be some out here that need to neutralize. Now I remember saying in the retrospective review that the, that the game really doesn't throw that many enemies at you. That might have been a bit of a lie. <laughs> Don't remember it. It changed like genuinely. I played through a little bit of it. Um, when did I last play this game? Again, to say it's one of my favourite games, I, I I can't remember the last time I played it to completion. I think it would be 2013. Here we go. One of the the other standout things about this game that I've always liked is, again, this game, as as we know, came out in 2001. Um, I say last month we looked at Onimusha Warlords, and that was a PlayStation 2 game. This game was going up against PlayStation 2 titles. They decided not to make the the jump to the PlayStation 2 
uh, console, which probably would have been a good idea, um, because this game comes on four discs. How does putting a cog into... Mm, I hope that's where we started. Yeah, how does putting a cog in there release that one dude? I think you could have thought of a, of a better, better mechanism for that. <sighs> yeah, so this game came on four discs, um, and no doubt the game would have looked. A li I think, genuinely, do think that the game probably would have looked a little bit more like Angel of Darkness um, if it had been on the PlayStation Two. Um, but it does. It does a good job. It it tells us that. Oh, hang on. This is yeah. This is, going back through this corridor is not as easy as. He's just getting through right to left. Go, 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 go. Right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll just do a quick save because uh, I don't want to have to do that again. Sorry, I've kind of uh, lost my train of thought there a little bit. Sorry, uh, Otter and your fruit. I think well, basically what I was uh, saying is this game, I think, stands up for, for its time. I think it's not... It's a hard game to, to sort of recommend today I, I think you kind of have to sort of be a fan of it um, in order to sort of like want to play it because if you're coming to sort of to gaming now I think the idea of tank controls is very very a alien to you. I guess it was kind of like back, <clears throat> back in 2001 when this when this game came out it was sort of a bit like saying to someone oh you should definitely you know play through Pong again because it's an amazing game Pong is an amazing game do not get me wrong I, you know I'm quite happily you know play Pong with somebody if uh, there's an old school arcade cabinet uh, in the in the vicinity obviously keeping you know six feet apart at all times <laughs> Um, but it's, it, I don't know if that makes sense, that sort of, uh, that sort of disjointedness between generations, I don't think anyone getting into gaming now would really get as much joy out of playing this game today as I did playing it back in 2001. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot, yes, come here, come here. Oh yes. Anna doesn't have a, uh, a knife, she has a uh, little uh, heel, uh, boot, boot blades, yeah. So she can still have a nice sweeping motion. Give me your bull nets, you naughty, naughty man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two of them here. Ah, oh. sorry, just cleaning up. You are being a stubborn bitch. Your turn. I got him in the back that first one, so you should go down quicker. I believe. Didn't seem to. Right. However, the, oh, hang on a minute. Have I got all the bits for the? 
Yes, I have now got all. I've now got all the pieces to fix the fixer, to get through a door, to uh, rescue Rain, who has been kidnapped by uh, Kitty Man. <laughs> that is an irritating thing about this game: the fact that you always have to have the correct key card out to get through the correct door in certain places. That that is bullshit. Now, because, again, this is a, a PlayStation 1 game, you, obviously you've probably noticed doing an awful lot of backtracking along the same areas. This was obviously a, a, a classic trope of um, games back then, because you only had kind of like limited amount of space, you could only make a limited number of environments, um, you sort of had to have this kind of like maze, puzzle-esque uh, feel, whereas you don't really, you don't sort of get that in games anymore. Even the um, recent uh, remaster of Resident Evil 2, I kind of feel you did a certain amount of backtracking because it was in the original game, so you kind of you kind of had to, but there was always this kind of like weird steady... There's a point in that game where there was a kind of weird steady push forward to new environments. Um, Resident Evil 4 was, was a classic for that. It sort of you steadily move through environments, you're not constantly backtracking, and I kind of miss that um, sort of isolated, you know, almost claustrophobic horror feel that you sort of got in games like this, Resident Evil 2, first Resident Evil, so much Resident Evil 3. Right, okay, so, I'm going to give you fair warning now, I'm going to fix this fixer and then we're going to see possibly one of the worst things in this game and it was solely put in for 13 year old boys <laughs> I hope it's in this next room, if it's not I'm going to feel stupid IT'S NOT! Uh, it's not. Damn it! <laughs> Where is it? It must be on the way to it Come on, I need your bullets. I need what you've got in your pockets. There you go. To be fair, I am collecting all the Uzi ammunition for a for a genuine reason. <laughs> I need the Uzis. Uh, yeah, do a quick save. I need all the Uzi ammunition for the proper uh, boss fight that we're about to get into. Is he down the ladder? Oh yes, of course he's down the ladder. Of course he's, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So I apologise. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, there it is. Yep, yep, take it in. And every single 13 year old boy that I knew at the time did something not akin to this. Oh my God. Just get that out of my system. <laughs> Come play with me, kitty kitty. Turn around and push you into the electrified water. Okay. Oh, you've jumped all the way over there. Well, that was very good of you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn around. Quick, quick, reload, reload. Yes. Sorry, I'm kicking the table again. Oh god, gonna have to get out the assault rifle. Quick tactical dodge. Tactical dodge. Finish.
dice. Do I have to pick anything up from him? No, I think I could just go and get rain from the. Get me out of this thing! <sighs> then that's gonna blow the central district of Hong Kong from down here. What? The sicko planted bombs in the methane exchange systems in the next rooms. I'll disengage the electronic locks to those rooms from here. Ah, uh, now this, the bombs. this, Shit. I liked. You see, so I've got like. <laughs> so to get back at anyone that was thirteen-year-old boys that were basically perving over that scene. Dirty boys. <laughs> Basically said, okay, now, D trousers up, you've got two minutes to disarm two bombs. Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> Which I loved. I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant way of getting around it. People were like, ah. <laughs> this screwed me over the first time I played it. It looks like that's the same door, but from a different angle. It's not. It's two different doors. One there. Take that. You've only got to do these two, so it's not. It's not massively time constraining, but so. Uh... And then through this door. We're gonna polish him off? Yeah, why not? Oh God, he's not even shooting back. A better man might feel a little bit guilty about that. I don't. Okay, and then get back down here. And then Rain spends a bit more time in her pants. That was close. Another nice save, Hannah. Are you alright? What the hell was that machine thing doing to you? <laughs> Don't die, kitties. Why won't he just die? Move. I know, I've been wondering the same thing, Hannah. Hannah, rain, sorry. Oh god! Run, 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 Hannah! Avoid the fireball! You, you, you the, use the door, use the door! There we go. Again, another brilliant bit. It's like, oh, people would be like all pervy over the, uh, over the lead character just in her underwear. Here's an instant death sequence. Get out of it. Thanks for watching, Littles and Jelly Spoons. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more Fear Effect 2 Retro Helix with myself and Otto the Ocelot. The best way to make sure that you don't miss out is to, of course, subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified every time there is a new Kai Mathy video uploaded. Cheerio, see you tomorrow.